of the Lord as far as I knew. And then we came to Ringland, people started acting quite funny, telling us that we needed to do something, and we, we called ourselves Christians. And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead of myself and tell you how I've, how I've answered that a lot of times. I feel like that if I had not have obeyed Acts 2.38, that I would have been lost. Praise the Lord. I do know that I had spoken tongues before I ever knew that there was an Acts 2.38, that it made a difference. But uh, when, when, as you all probably, most of you would remember this, that we were out here and had radio broadcast, and I would quote the scriptures. As you were listening, you probably thought he won't quote those scriptures. But I really believe and God, as good as he is, is able to shine light enough that a blind can see. There's no need to stumble when the Word says that he is the light. He is really the light. Yeah. Praise God forever. I appreciate tonight the uh, prayers that you have prayed for us. I appreciate you welcoming, welcoming us to your town at this tent. And I'd say this, and I really believe this. I believe that every oneness person ought to be here, and we ought to forget anything that would divide us, because you know for sure it's the enemy that brings division and confusion. We're not going to get the job done as long as we pick at each other. I used to live down three and a half miles from a little town. A man raised turkeys, and every time I passed, he gave me a nice young turkey nearly every time, a lot of time. And uh, the reason that that was happening, any time a hide was broken, a little bit of blood was seen, the rest of those turkeys would beat that turkey to death. So it's this way. The Scripture says it, and I believe we ought to heed it, that if your brother is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of meekness. I wonder what's happened with the ministry of restoration. Praise God forever. I, I feel like this tonight, that I'm certainly among friends. I really feel like that. Praise God. And I accepted Jesus' name baptism before I understood the Godhead. I did not understand the Godhead. I accepted it. I accepted Jesus' name baptism before I knew really the Godhead hardly at all. And as I did this, it was not easy for me to explain to my wife, who was not accepting Jesus' name baptism, and was also looking to me for answers as to ex explanation of the Godhead. Uh, 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 my preacher friends came to my house, and they'd knock on my door, and they'd walk in, and I'm sitting in an assembly of God parsonage, and they would look at me, as if I had stolen a horse. Right. And they, they would come at me harshly. And I'm sitting there and I said, Brother, you say anything that you want to say, I know you want to hurt me. And I gave him free reign. I went to the Assemblies of God uh, camp meetings and they would greet me on the outside as uh, one good friend of mine. He said, Here comes that one list. And I ought to take my belt and beat the oneness out of him. I said, friend, look at him. I said, friend, why don't you preach the word to me and straighten me out on it? I said that to him. I stood on that campground and I heard their preachers say, Father, you come. Son, you come. Holy Ghost, you come. And help us to have revival. Praise God forever. You say, preacher, you're just making light. No, sir, I can prove everything that I'm saying. That same brother walked up to me as we were sitting at a mall shop one day, and he stuck his head in the door. This is about the time my wife had accepted baptism in Jesus' name. He said, Brother Dunn, I don't know what happened to you, but somewhere you've gone wrong. And again, I told him as he started to run, I said, why don't you, instead of reproving 
put some word on me. And he ran from the car. My wife at that time, who had accepted baptism in Jesus' name, she started, ho started hollering, Hey, come here. Hey, come here. He wouldn't come back. Let me tell you something. It, it's the scripture that says the evil flee when no man pursues, but the righteous stand just as bold as a lion. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. It's a bit degrading for me who was one time thought of in town if I looked at it from a flesh standpoint. But if I look at it from a spiritual standpoint tonight and I think of what he suffered, my cross is still easy. Light, my burdens are light, my yoke is easy. He, he bore it all for me. In a way to thank you for offering tonight, if I was preaching for money, I never would be in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I never would. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I think this will interest you. My wife, one year after I had accepted it, baptism in Jesus' name, we were sitting over here at Gospel Tabernacle, and the ladies had worked on her desperately to get her to see, as well as myself. She had told me, said, I'll go home to Mama, and you can go on preaching. I said, you do whatever you feel you've got to do, but I have got to preach what I know is the truth. Then she knew that she hadn't weakened me there. Then she said, I'll be baptized for you. I said, you won't be baptized no such a way. You'll be baptized when you know it's the truth and you want to obey the truth. And not until. Then, the enemy came at me and said, if you start preaching what those foolish folks preach, you'll starve. Really, the enemy told me that. And I thought about it. How many of you think I'm a dummy? I, I, don't, I don't class myself dumb. And I've said this way, when I was observing and God had thoroughly convinced me and I was ready and willing to accept it, I didn't make any bones about it. And if those of you remember the night I came up out of the water, I said, now I can preach what the apostles preached. Praise God. And that's all that ever needed to be preached. And if that was all that was ever preached, there wouldn't be all the ism and schism in our land tonight. And there'd be a whole lot more people going to heaven. Then the Lord gave me this vision or dream. Just before my wife accepted Jesus' name baptism, I reached a place with her that I said, I'm not going to worry about you. I didn't tell her that. I said, I'm putting you in God's hand to myself, I said it. One night in Ringland, I laid down and went to sleep, and here is exactly as best I can remember it since 1963. The Lord showed me a man with no foot coming down a stairway in a dingy old housing what would be an institution for both men and women. And I went into that place and I started up the stairway. And I met my wife coming down the stairway. And I asked her, I said, Mary, what are you doing here? She said, I'm here because of the name. And that man uh, that was standing there had a bull whip in his hand and he started to hit me with it. And I reached and took the bull whip from his hand. I took my wife and that bull whip and I walked out of that place and almost immediately I had a flat on my car. 
and they fixed the flat and I paid them for fixing the flat. So that dream to me, Mary accepted Jesus' name baptism almost immediately after this vision or dream. And that dream to me can be verified with years of experience. So I tell it tonight without hesitation or without any doubting that God really gave me my wife. He really gave me a bullwhip. And he really gave me finance. And I really believe that he meant it when he said, I won't ever leave you. Amen. I'll never forsake you. Amen. Praise God forever. So I'd say this. I'm not down here to be different than anyone. I'm down here to further what I know is God's truth to the most precious element on earth. God's people. And it would be a God blessing if we would let our own convictions unstop our ears and allow our hearts to become less hard. And we want to know the truth. It will help you. Praise the Lord. That's for what it's worth, Department. But I wanted to tell you about it. You say, why are you coming here? Why are you here? I went to a oneness camp meeting almost immediately after that. They had the little old toe sacks up. And you know how oneness folks are sometimes. They're penny pinchers and they uh, this and that and scrounge around. And I felt bad. And I went over there and got in the pulpit. And one of the brothers said, if so the Lord doesn't do something for Brother Dunn, he'll be back in the assembly. And I heard him say it. And I said, Brother, God's already done for, for something for Brother Dunn because I didn't walk out with that blindfold on me. I knew what I was doing before I left him. Praise God, boy. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I knew it well enough that when I went home to my hometown, the preachers of that particular faith said, Leave him alone. I was a street sweeper for the longest. I could walk down the street and they'd give me all kind of room. That's right. Praise God forever. You don't swerve your car if there's no boulder in the road. You don't run in the ditch missing something if you didn't see it. You want me to use the whip a little? The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I feel like this. They were trying a black man one time about a knife fight. And the judge looked at him and said, Did you cut him? He said, Every time I could see him or feel him. And you know what I'm talking about? They carried razors. And I tell you what tonight, if you'll get anointed and take this with you, you can cut this world to ribbons. This is the unadulterated, divine, heaven-sent, precious, soul-saving, heart-thrilling, blessing, Word of God. Hallelujah. It's not something to abuse folks with, but I like the next thought. As the days of heart surgery is taking place, and they turn on whatever kind of a saw it is and rip you open. And they go hanging bypasses in you. They got here a long time after Jesus did. He'd been ripping folks open for a long time and putting new hearts in them. Praise God forever. And I tell you this, his stitching is a whole lot better than the natural man. God can still perform that work. God can still do it. You ought to be thankful tonight that you were brought up in this town and this is your hometown. And there's nothing as precious as the truth that God has given you that Proverbs tells me in 23 and 23 that you need to buy it and don't sell it. 
I wrote a little song. I'm going to sing as much of it as I can. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to relate it. My voice won't let me sing. But I, I wrote this song. It goes like this. Parents, are you honest? Truth? Do you proclaim? You tell your children you love them, but withhold the saving name. Just another Guyana result will be the same. Guyana, oh Guyana, with all your guilt and shame. The chorus goes, honesty is still the best policy. Truth is not for sale. Guyana never should have happened if someone the truth could have told. Guyana, oh Guyana, with all your grief and woe. The second verse is, Preacher, you are honest. Truth, you must proclaim. Tell his children he really loves them. Preach in Jesus' name. Amen. Avoid another Guyana. Avoid it. Tell them in Jesus' name. Praise God forever. Praise the Lord. A man walked to my door when I had accepted this, and I'm an Assemblies of God parsonage and the presbyter of that particular faith, visited my house and asked me to get out of the parsonage. And I finished many scriptures that he tried to quote to me. He was formally baptized in Jesus' name and went back on it. I'm not going to call his name. But he told me, Brother Dunn, he said, you waited the creek to get away. If you'll let me baptize you back like you were, you can preach like we preach for six months, and then we'll loose you to preach any way you want to preach. He said, God made the sun and the moon and the stars, and you're following the lightning bug. And I said, Brother, that don't sound like any offer to me. You just let me go. Praise God forever. And I've been preaching. And I tell you this tonight, I have friends in oneness. I have some Jesus' name friends. And there is going to be a church of this kind of thinking people when Jesus comes back. Amen. Praise God forever. Persecutions are not new to this clan. Snubs and cold shoulders. If you eat them long enough, you'll get used to them and you can just go on and enjoy them. Praise God forever. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You say, you preaching doctrine, I'm just talking to you out of my heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You want me to hush and preach to you? Now, I want to tell you something. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I haven't preached to please some of you. It's the night that I've been here. I, I believe everybody under here probably understands Jesus' name, baptism. And I do it this way. I say everybody ought to know who Jesus is. <laughs> Praise, Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to get hoarse and I'm talking about one that's, uh, uh, who Jesus is or Jesus' name, baptism. Even though if there's anybody in here got any doubt in your mind, whether I believe it or not, bring me somebody to baptize and watch me baptize them. I won't disappoint you. Praise God. And I preach it too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My preaching, I, I school myself on preaching different. One friend of mine, he said this, he kept having this in preachers. And I said, why don't you preach? He said, I don't want to get old in my congregation. <laughs> I said, that's all right. I can understand that. And <clears throat> me, nine years at a church, and I never passed at a church but four years and four months. That's my tenure at any place. But we're hooked up at Broken Air that I'm going on nine years. And if you stay anywhere with any degree of acceptance, you're going to have to get something new. 
<laughs> you better get something new. Because if there's anything that hurts my feelings, see somebody. <laughs> well, that's right. Praise the Lord. Y'all don't think I'm going to preach, do you? You don't really believe it, do you? Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe the gospel is the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believes. I believe that if it's preached, it will get the job done. Hallelujah. It's sowing seed and it's plowing too. It's watering and germinating and it's fertilizing and it's producing because the scripture said if these things be in you and abound, it shall make you neither barren or unfruitful. So if I act confident tonight in the gospel, you've got it exactly right. Praise God. I believe the gospel can do anything that needs to be done. And there is a dire need for the gospel to be preached. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll announce my text now. Maybe I don't get to come back to Ringling. But I'll announce my text, and it's going home a different way. And I've taken that text from the second chapter of the book of Matthew, and uh, in verse 12, in the latter part of that verse, it's where Herod had sent men over to find Jesus, who was a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, and they took guilt frankincense and treasures and, and gifts and they opened them and they presented them unto Jesus uh, gold and frankincense and myrrh and in the 12th verse the latter part of it they were warned of God in the first part of it that they should not turn back to Herod then they departed into uh, their own country another way praise God and what is preaching about this tonight is that we're all in this together if we are, say amen. amen. I help you, you help me. Praise God. What good would it do me be out here by myself? I'm not getting anything done out here by myself. Okay? Now then, I want to get on the thought. We have been around the, uh, the message so long that we're being robbed of the privilege of that going home blessed and different. You say, not me. No, now just a minute. However well the preacher will preach, you'll get that thrill for the time that he's preaching. Or however, however long that song is that sung and blesses you, you'll get that thrill. But I believe this. I believe if we can get a little bit of the content of this one verse, you can go home a different way. You can. I've been here so long. You can still go home freshened and strengthened and blessed of God and, and with more zeal and more determination, I don't care how much or how long you've been going to the house of the Lord. And just be real frank with you, if I could send every one of you home tonight like you went home when you first found it, I promise you, you'll be happier than you were when you came to church. I believe it. I'm going to try to take my time. Y'all don't care, do you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What they did is they done something. They opened their treasure. Now, if you sit down on the pew and you look like a, a work of a taxidermist instead of the work of the Holy Ghost, nobody can preach and help you. And I wonder sometimes how in God's world you ever got there. 
Now say amen with me. Praise God. It said they opened their treasure. When you come to church, it's not to get you that comfortable position and say, okay, Buster, you said you was a preacher. Bless me. You want my job? I got to bless Ray Blair. And he knows the message backwards and frontwards. And he's about three blocks ahead of me. What I got to do, I got to come up here and I got to tell Brother Blair that you can still go home a different way. You can still go home. You say, I came a certain route, but I just changed out a block or two and I'll fulfill what you're talking about. I'm not talking about ge geography or streets. I'm talking about attitude. And I could stay there a long time. We don't need to be feeling sorry for ourselves. And you don't need to be going around telling people about all of your troubles. Half of them can't do anything about it. And probably a fourth of them are glad you got them. That's about right. It's and they're plum full like my uncle that was standing on the street of Callington and somebody walked up to him and started talking about how bad he's being treated at home. My uncle looked at him and he said, you tell your troubles to that post. I've got enough troubles of my own. They opened their treasure. That means that they came to the house of God and they put something in it. If you put something in it, that'll be the best step toward going home a different way. And I think that was emphasized in the mentioning of the gifts that oh, they opened. Gold is it precious. Praise God for everything. Just what do you mean, preacher? I believe that you ought to, if you don't feel like worshiping God, worship God anyhow. Hallelujah. I believe that. You say, well, what good will it get, uh, do me? The Bible tells me this, that God is great, and He is greatly to be praised. The psalmist said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what I really feel like needs to happen. I think you ought to empty yourself unto God in a praise and a worship. Hallelujah. You with me, Sister Annie. Praise God forever. This is the way to go home different. Let me do this with you. Some people come to church and the singing's too flat and too dry and the preacher was picking on me and they get in the car and before they're three blocks from the deal they pick up the, the day routine argument or whatever it is and if they got anything at church they lose it. You're not getting what you need to get if that's the way you go home. When you come to the house of God, it ought to be like a bathing or a sitting at the a banquet table. It ought to be some, some kind of a reception from God and a change transpires within you as an individual and, and you're a new you when you leave the house of God and you go back to wherever you're going, going home the other way. Praise God. Praise God. You'd rather preach fast. You want me to huff and puff some? Luke 15, verse 15. There's an old boy that left home, one of the prodigals. He took the goods that his father had worked for and gave to him, and he spent it riotously. And he joined himself unto the citizens of another country. Soon he became in war when a famine had come upon the land and that poor boy was in a terrible shape and he never did understand why he was in that shape until he came to the hog pen and he looked over in it and he saw himself. He came to himself and he raised his head and he said, My father has hired servants and bread plentiful. I'm going to go home another way. 
I don't have that fancy dress I had when I left. I don't have the name and character that I had when I left my father's house. I don't have the money and friends I had when I left my father's house. I've got one thing to do, and I've got to go home another way. I want you to situate yourself with him and take a few steps with me with him. Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Why aren't you happy? I am wasteful. I am foolish. I have, I have absolutely degraded my family, and I am very, very low today. God today is looking upon a world full of people that's going home that way. Every Monday finds them apologetic, but still having a terrible hangover. They are going home with saddened hearts, heavy laden hearts, burdens of sin and guilt upon them. I'm happy tonight that I am able to go home like I'm trying to implant in your mind tonight, happy, a victor over the things that bound this young man to make his home going such a sad and such a dreaded occasion. He got there. He looked at his father that ran to meet him. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. He said, make me as one of thine hard servants. That young man was received. I would certainly admonish the world tonight to make the same steps that that young man made that's going home different. Don't go home to mother and dad doped up. Don't go home to mom and dad with wrong thoughts in your mind. Honor your dad's and mother's house uh, in a trip home in respect to say, I appreciate you so much. They'll re receive you. They will welcome you. In the fourth chapter of St. John, the scriptures in the fourth part of that chapter said it was needful that Jesus should go by Samaria. He went by Samaria that day the disciples were with him. And like people, they were hungry. He sent them away to buy meat. And as they were going to buy meat, he sat on the well that Jacob had given them. And probably about this time down in the city, there was a woman who was guilty of entertaining the idea of five husbands. And it was time to go to that well to draw water. She left that day, and if I could just kindly play her thoughts a little, she was saying, I'm no good. Life isn't offering me very much because I'm just not what I need to be. And I've tried. I've even sang that worldly song. I'm going to be different. There's been a change in me. No doubt this had happened so many times. But I'm here to tell you as she took that long journey to the well, there was somebody sitting on the curb of that well that day that he could be the one that could say, Ma'am, I'm going to send you home another way. As she came to the well that day, he had asked her, Ma'am, will you give me drink? She was not so foolish as not to know his nationality. She said, how is it, you being a Jew, you ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? We don't have any dealings with each other. Let me tell you something. The Lord, he intercepted her pathway. He got exactly where she was going to be. And it thrills me tonight to know this. I don't care how tucked away you may be in this town. You can be playing whatever the animal you want to be, hiding your eyes from the truth, but you might as well open your eyes to the truth 
because you can't hide from the truth that costs so much and the truth of God's word tonight will send you home another way. She said, sir, uh, he said, if you would have asked me the water, I would have given you water that you would never thirst again. She said, sir, the well is deep and you don't have anything to draw with. Let me tell you something tonight. There's a lot of people that are in the boat of, of consideration. They're trying to rationalize. They're trying to think things through. I think you ought to think, but I, it won't work near as well as leaning on Jesus. That works better than all the thinking that you can do. You don't want to lean under your own understanding, but hear Him, and He will direct you. He finally got the message across to her when he asked her the question, where's your husband? She said, I have no husband. Jesus didn't let her stop there, but she frankly admitted her faults to him. He said, I know you have those. Then she looked at him and she said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And then she said, forever, give me of this water that I neither have to come and draw our thirst again. If, if you would today, just look at her as she does and do unto the Savior of this world, who was able to look at his disciples when they returned. And he said, I have eaten of meat that you know not of. He came to this world to seek and to save that which was lost. Let me tell you something that was probably one of the greatest home going that was ever uh, registered in the account of history. Can you see her? And she said, I met the master. He gave me living water. Praise God forever. I'm not using imagination now. Now I'll prove it to you. She did something some of us didn't do today. When she got back down to that town where she went, had been in such sinful practices. Her uh, speech was convincing enough and she was happy enough in the new way that she came into town that she brought the others that were down there and said, come and see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. And she came back and said, what mountain is it that we're supposed to worship in? And Jesus used that to tell her, it's not the mountain. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I wanted to relate those two stories to you because they're just exactly opposite. Just exactly opposite. You say, immaterial to me. That may be immaterial to you, but I'm happy to know that Jesus is looking for every boy that's wavered for the turning point in their life. He's bidding heavy for the soul. His spirit is still in operation saying, Come, and you shall find rest under your soul. To the sinner you can come home a different way. To the saints and the people of the church tonight, you can love God more. You can want more understanding of the Word. You can be more effective in your life of prayer. Your community needs you as a light shining in, in a darkened world tonight. And you've got every reason in the world to let this begin, be the beginning of the rest of your life. And don't go home the way you came to this house tonight. Go home more happy in God more thankful for the blessings of God, richer in God. It needs to happen every time you go to the house of the Lord. The Word says you grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. You say, praise God forever. Can I do that? Oh, yes, sir. I promise you this. As a, as a blanket idea for the entire church, we've stayed the same way too long. We've been the same us too long. You're not angry. True. Get closer to God. It's individually. Love Him more. It's individually. Lean on Him heavier. 
it's individual thing. And you can do it. You still believe in miracles? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I believe in miracles. Praise God. It might be a miracle sometimes for us to really feel like that we've been to church, but I believe this with all of my heart. That one that was able to bless the loaves and the fish and feed the multitude, he's still in operation. Praise God forever. He is still in operation. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I think tonight, and I'm going to try to quit with this. I really believe this. I believe this is Bible times more than any time that has ever been before this time. I believe this is God's day. I know the Scripture said today is the day of salvation, and now is the accepted time. This is. Hallelujah. we got people sitting around in our pews wishing they could have been back in Moses' day. Can you see him after about 15 years look for a bush burning? Said, if I'd have been him, I'd have had to have a bush burning more than a 40-year period. I've been looking. He said, something's got to happen. And after 40 years, God set the bush of fire upon him and said, so this is the bush of fire. And the word said, draw nine, take up your feet. And the angel appeared over it. Starts talking to him. Praise God forever. God is more than able tonight to let you have more than you had when you come to this place. And the scripture talks about it in Second Peter. Add to, add to temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness. Add to, add to, you add to it. Hallelujah. So it's this way. Praise God forever. You need to realize this, that you are a recipient of divine nature of God and you can grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and you can say it this way, I'm going to grow every day. I'm going to go to God's house empty. I'm going to get full. Every time I go home, I'm going home a different way. I'm not going to be the same old me. Praise God forever. And you can put aside a lot of things that bother you. Praise God forever. My wife, uh, she wouldn't like me to say this. And I might say this for the women. First I'll start with saying that something the Lord showed me a long time ago. You go to the hospital room and you walk in there, a patient is pale and frail and down. And you walk up there and you take them by the hand and they start telling you the impossibilities of their life. And it gets so pathetic. I just go to it. Like that. Kill you. Kill you dead as a hammer. You'd listen to it. You walk into a hospital anytime you want to be a pastor and visit people in the hospital. You clean, fresh, feel good. You walk in there. They're dying. Praise God forever. You take them by the hand and you look them in the eye and you say, Jesus loves you. And isn't it wonderful that you're able to feel Him? And you go talking about how good God is? That's dominating conversation. Praise God. You have to do it. My wife, we go into a hospital room. I think sometimes she's going to get in the bed with them. She's so sympathetic. And she talked to them for an hour and 15 minutes. And it just gets worse and worse. And I tell her when we get outside, huh? You make a hospital call as brief as you can make it possible and be respectful. That's whether they're nearly dying or whether they are just up out faking it. You don't stay in there because you have a tendency to hear the things that you ought not to hear and say the things that you shouldn't say. That's where you want your yeas to be yay and your nays to be nay. You say, I'm going to visit you, duck. If you ever get in a hospital and walk in, say hi, bye. <laughs> Praise God forever. I got news for you. They got me in a hospital here before the answer some time back. And you know what I told them? My wife and kids. I told my wife, I said, go home and stay. That's right. I told my girl, go home and don't come back. You want me to tell you what I was doing? I said, oh, turn on the cooler. And when that nurse came in with that needle, I looked at her and convincingly said, Ma'am, I want to tell you, I'm real delicate. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. You say, that's you? Sure, that's me. Praise God forever. But we've got so much to live for here. Hallelujah to God. And I say it this way. 
I'm so glad the church is what it is. Church is a sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if you can sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and go home the same way you came, you're going to live a bored, dissatisfied, an incomplete life in God. But you can be a positive thinker, a positive liver, a happy Joe in God, and it's going to be worth or everything in the world to you if you can get it said. He said for me to go home a different way. Praise God, brother. You won't have to use imagination or dreams or suspicions or anything. Just know this. God's still able to, to, to rain heaven's blessings up on you. All you need to do is get your eyes up and look on Him and reach out to Him and you can go home a different way. And I'm going to do this with you and I'm going to quit.